Hi all, it's Neo Rambler here with another rambling about the video game world video. Well, in actual fact, this one isn't strictly related to the video game world. It's actually a response or at least a extension of a video I watched made by Doug Walker, also known as the Nostalgia Critic, on Where's the Fair Use or WTFU, which you could abbreviate as something a bit ruder than that. But hey, that's what he's gone with. So what am I on about? Well, Doug Walker, also known as the Nostalgia Critic, did a video on his channel, Channel Awesome, as the Nostalgia Critic, commenting on fair use and how the fair use law is being abused and stepped on by Hollywood and music producers, directors, music industry in general, probably the movie industry in general, not just specifically Hollywood, um, in that people who upload videos on YouTube, at the very least, who uh, take snippets of movies or music videos, um, and movies, sorry, and then put them in their video and then basically do a review on it or a spoof um, or a satire of it, um, anything where they haven't used the full movie footage or the full uh, music track or song track or whatever, uh, or music video, they've just taken bits of it to make a point or make their own creative work out of it. You know what I mean. There's, I mean, I do it with my Let's Plays and people do it with their Let's Plays and review videos, such on and such forth. Um, they should be protected, these content creators, including the Nostalgia Critic or Doug Walker and many others who do use uh, bits of movie footage and music videos, etc. for their videos to criticise, to make a comment on, to entertain, to satire, etc. Uh, they should be protected by the fair use policy in that it is legal for someone to take bits of a copyrighted piece of material and then use it as a means of satire or criticism, etc, etc. And that the copyright holder of said material that they've taken bits from uh, has no legal basis to make claims against them or take their video down or take them to court over the fact they're infringing copyright, etc, etc, or making money off their material uh, illegally or illicitly without their permission. That's the key thing, permission. Um, they haven't asked permission from the copyright holder to use their work in their work, the content creator's work. Um, so, yeah, and uh, in the US, that's pretty much what the law is. You know, you are allowed to take bits of copyright material and use it in your own material as satire or criticism or commenting, etc. And because I'm based and live in the UK, we have a similar thing. Now, of course, in different countries around the world, there are different uh, interpretations of the fair use policy and, of course, different laws with regards to copyright material. Some looser than the fair use policy of America and the UK, some tighter, some don't exist at all. You know, if you use any form of copyright material that ha you haven't got permission from the person who owns the copyright to use, you can get into trouble if the copyright holder wants to press charges or make a claim, etc. Now, with regards to YouTube, which is now a international format, um, Google, who didn't come up with YouTube, but bought it out uh, a few years ago, um, have now put in a system or have had a system in place for about three or four years now, um, whereby they've created some sort of algorithmic system where anybody with a copyright uh, to their name over some content, be it movie or music, etc., um, they can upload their copyright claim onto this algorithmic program of YouTube um, whereby basically they can tell this program, this YouTube system, that if anybody uses any of their copyright material for however much length and time that they are allowed to use it for, or at least longer than how much they're allowed to use it for, without permission in their videos, and they've monetized the videos, which means the creator has put ads on the videos and is making money from viewership, uh, then there's an automatic claim made. You know, the video then gets claimed by the copyright holder because of the system that they've told that anybody who uses their copyright material without permission automatically gets a claim against it. And any money that the content creator would have made of the video with the copyright material in it is immediately then given to the copyright holder because of the claim. No arguments, no ifs, no buts. It just happens. 
Now, the person who has the claim made against them can make uh, an appeal against it or dispute it, um, but they can only dispute it uh, once, or they only get access to three disputes or three uh, sort of fight backs or whatever you want to call it. And um, I'm not sure if it's three for the entirety of the channel's lifespan or just three per claim or something. I'm not 100% sure. Or three a day. I don't know what the limit is. They're three. They're allowed to make up to three appeals, is what I'm trying to say. Um, I don't know again if it's per day or per month or per year or uh, per channel's lifespan. I don't know. But you're allowed to make appeal against it. But in the meantime, while you're trying to dispute this claim, if you believe you fall under fair use policy or what have you, the person who's made the claim is automatically making money from your video. And as soon as or if you get your claim resolved and the person who made the claim is wrong and has abused the fair use policy or didn't consider the fair use policy when they made the claim, um, then they can't make money off your video anymore. The right to go back to you, you're allowed to re-monetize the video and you're allowed to make money from it again. However, the money that they did make from your video in the time it takes for you to get your video claim disputed and uh, appealed uh, and then get your right to monetize your video back, that money they made in the meantime, they get to keep it. They don't have to return it back. Nothing's done about it. Um, and also if the claimant has made a false claim or they made a claim that was successfully disputed and the claim was removed, they don't get any form of penalty or punishment for it. They can just state another claim or put another claim on the video again um, or they can just carry on. There's no penalty or punishment for them making a false claim. So all this information was made by the Nostalgia Critic or Doug Walker in his video and several other content creators as well that he put in the video as in uh, other content creators who who make content have commented on this video they were in his video uh, as voiceovers who made the same arguments about their channel and shared their personal experiences um, and the nostalgia critical Doug Walker commented on his own where recently his channel got a copyright strike made against him which is worse than a claim uh, it's where somebody has filed a legal claim or a legal takedown of the video that they've said infringes the copyright material that the video has used in question and they want the video taken down legally or the channel gets shut down and apparently according to youtube you're allowed to have up to three copyright strikes put on your account again i don't know what the time span is i think it's one per year or three per every two or three years or something like that um but the first one that you get you immediately get a ton of restrictions placed on your channel uh the second one you get even more restrictions and then the third one that's it your channel's removed and deleted and you have to pick up any claims or pieces or legal stuff afterwards and it's done automatically youtube does it automatically they don't give you time or a grace period to sort your stuff out they just do it automatically that's it you can't argue against it if they do it they do it um, and that's what happened to Doug Walker. He got one copyright strike on his channel awesome program uh, or channel, I should say. Um, I can't remember who by. I think it was a Japanese company or studio. And because of just one copyright strike, not two, not three, just one, he lost his ability to monetize his videos. He was not allowed to make videos longer than 15 minutes. Um, and he wasn't getting paid for his content from one strike. Whereas usually it takes up to three strikes for something like that to happen. And he just basically commented on it on a few vlog things he did as Doug Walker. And then recently did this Nostalgia Critic video on it on his channel. Um, about this whole abuse of fair use policy and abuse of the YouTube system that they've put in place to apparently protect content creators and the people who own these copyrights. You know, try and balance the situation out. Uh, but it hasn't worked because there are tons of people and companies and copyright holders out there who are abusing this system because as soon as they see any form of their copyright material being used, even under the fair use policy, uh, in videos where creators have taken their copyright work and satirised uh, it um, or criticised it or are using their copyright material to make a point... Um, they just make a claim and that's it, done. There's no dis there's no consideration of fair use policy. They just make the claim and it doesn't matter if the claim gets resolved or not or disputed or successfully appealed by the person who had the claim made against them. They just do it anyway and they make money off you. 
uh, they make money off the people who they've made claims against. And if the claim, like I said, does get resolved or appealed, and the they, the claimant loses the right to make money off their off the video they've made a claim against, they get to keep any money they've made in that time between they've made the claimant and the claim being thrown out or disputed. Um, so there's no repercussions, and the only person who suffers is the creator. And the creator is given very limited chances to appeal their or argue their case for why they've used the copyright material without permission. Um, and they're still vulnerable to other claims and vulnerable to strikes and what have you from anybody else for any of their other videos. You know, as soon as your video is uploaded, anybody can make a claim. Apparently, it's not just through the YouTube system, this automatic algorithmic system, that claims can be made. Claims can be made manually as well. So even if you haven't uploaded your copyright material onto uh, the YouTube system, so basically YouTube takes care of any claimants that are made on your behalf automatically. If you decide to do it manually, you can still do so. Um, even if your claim is false or your claim is not legal or has no basis whatsoever, you can still do it um, and make money. And again, if it gets disputed or appealed against, no repercussions. You just can't make any more money off that video, but you can make another claim against it and carry on making more money. You know, it doesn't matter. So... Doug Walker and the Sarge Critic made this video about, you know, this has got to stop. This abuse of this YouTube system and this abuse of the fair use law, and it's not just a policy, I should say, I should be more specific, it's a law, should be stopped. You know, these Hollywood companies, um, or movie, film, music creators, directors, and these other subsidiary companies that can make claims on the behalf of copyright holders, so third party companies can do it on the behalf of someone else, even if they don't actually own the copyright material, like record companies and stuff or record labels, they can still do it. That's their job. That's how they make money. Um, this has to stop where they can't keep abusing the system. And it should be that the creators should have more power or more time to resolve something without them being financially crippled. Um, or at least, you know, not having the ability to make money. Now, he made suggestions, the Starcher Critic, in that if a claim is made against a video on YouTube, there should be a grace period whereby no, no, the claim is made and there should be a set period of time where the person who's had the claim made against them should be allowed to fight their case back. But in that time, they should still be allowed to make money off the videos that they've made, i.e. the claimant can't just automatically start making money straight away. There should be a grace period. And if or if that's not good enough, then have a side account, a mediator account where any money being made from the video from the point of the claim, the money should go to the side account. So no one that is the creator and the claimer actually gets the money until the claim's been resolved i.e the claim is legal and therefore there's nothing the content creator can do about it because they've broken the law or broken copyright or vice versa where the claimer has made a false claim and the creator was in their rights to use their material legally without permission so that's fair enough um and also that this fair use law needs to be updated or it needs to be clarified and it needs to be policed properly outside of youtube so Hollywood and music producers don't abuse it in America and the equivalents in the UK and elsewhere around the world who have countries or laws where they have a similar policy in place. And thirdly and lastly, that Hollywood especially, and he was picking on Hollywood because the nostalgia critic is a, a movie reviewer or a movie critic, um, and Doug Walker is as well, uh, Hollywood should be working with the internet and content creators to well, for both sides to make money from, if you know what I mean. So, in other words, rather than Hollywood trying to shut things down and stop creators from expressing themselves and using their material to satirise or comment or critique on, etc., they should be working with the content creators and setting up some sort of agreement where creators uh, on YouTube can make video content that's, I say, original, but create material that's good and funny using existing material where they can make money, but then so can Hollywood as well. So in other words, everybody wins, basically. Um, but he argued that there are some people in Hollywood or some groups or companies or directors, movie producers, actors, actresses, whatever. And I'm sure he also implied 
the world of music and video games too, I should mention, where they don't think that way and they don't want to work with anyone and they seriously just want to protect their work. And if anybody uses it in any format for any length of time illegally, i.e. they haven't asked for their uh, permission from the, uh, from the copyright holder to use their material in their video for whatever reason, even though fair use policy or law is in place, then, you know, they shut them down, remove the video, get them taken down. That's that. And he kind of, uh, Doug Walker, that is, uh, extended the argument towards free speech and censorship and the stifling of, uh, of content creators uh, in their ability to represent themselves and free speech, etc., that this has a knock-on effect on that. So, yeah, so that's basically what has happened. If you don't uh, understand me very well, because I'm not very good at explaining things, then I'll put a link to channel awesome and the video that doug walker made as the nostalgia critic um alpha omega sin another person who i watch on youtube regularly um extended on this and he made his video to throw his two cents into the argument and he commented on the fact he saw doug walker's video and he wants to expand on the sit the, the points made by doug walker um and he pretty much says similar things um and he just wants people to know more about it fair enough and i'm sure there'll be a few other youtubers out there who will do something similar if it gets that big. The idea behind this uh, where's the fair use hashtag uh, and, and uh, theme that's going on is that YouTube pays attention and does something about the system because it's being abused. So that makes sense. And all I wanted to do is just throw my two cents on the situation because I am a content creator. I make my Let's Play videos for my channel for people to enjoy. Um, and I have monetized my videos. I have partnered with someone uh, because I just wanted to see where it would go. I don't make a living off it though, unlike Doug Walker and the Nostalgia Critic who do make a living off their work. And I believe Alpha Omega Sin makes some of his living off it, off his channel, um, if not all of his living. I don't know. I think he makes some of it. I don't know. Um, they make a living off their work. So if they start getting threatened by copyright holders and the YouTube system is being abused against them, it damages their livelihood. It damages their income. It damages their way of life. Whereas with me, for example, I have a job outside of my YouTube channel. I do mine as a hobby. I'm way too small to make a living out of it. And nowadays it's very hard, you know, unless you're coming up with really top-notch uh, class A content that's either original or is funny entertaining or really strikes an audience and you've got a means of marketing yourself using the system of youtube and otherwise contacts maybe as well um or you get very lucky or a combination of all of the above that i just said um i'm not going to make it big and i don't intend to i just want to be as big as people want me to be as big in other words if people want me to be big then they will make the effort to do so if they don't then that's fine but with my channel state at the moment, I just want to say that, for the record, I'm very happy with where it is, and I'm happy with where it goes. If it doesn't get any bigger than where it's now, I'm not bummed. I'm still going to make content. I'm still going to make videos. I'm still going to do my work, because the main reason why I did it was a means of expressing myself. I don't have a social life. I don't have many friends. I don't have a girlfriend or a relationship. I've never been in a relationship um, or anything like that. I have very little contact with people because I am socially awkward. I, I struggle to socialise with people um, and people I have socialised with in the past, um, I've messed it up. I destroyed it. I I've weirded them out because I'm not very good at it. I just lack the psychological ability to socialise with people on a human to human level. Partly because I generally don't think in the same way that most people do in that I won't consider myself unique but I would consider myself to be in a minority of viewing the world and my beliefs and ideas and exposure to life etc you know it's very different from most people's um, but I don't hold that against them nor do I believe myself to be superior or better on an equal level of them I'm not I just can't and I find a lot of the stuff that people are interested in rather dull um, because I don't know much about it and it's never appealed to me again doesn't mean that they're boring or wrong or anything it's just that you know as a person or anything it just means i find it dull so my point being is, is i use my youtube channel to express myself and i express myself through video games because that's my main hobby that's what i've been doing ever since i was five years old and i experimented quite a few years ago uh with youtube i think it was back in 2010 where i thought oh, i'll give this let's play thing a go i'd like to do it i'd like to have a go 
So I had a channel before the channel I've got now, and I did all right with it. You know, I got to 130 subscribers. But because of the job I took on, I had to shut it down. It was, uh, it could be considered unprofessional. So I thought, well, that's a shame, but I've got to do it because if I don't, then I can't make a living with the job I'm in. But then I started a new one because I thought, well, actually, no, this is a part of my life. If I just start a new one and try to keep it as clean as possible in terms of language at the very least, then if I do get found out or whatever, then, well, hopefully it wouldn't be that big of an issue. But since then, it has got a bit dirtier, etc. You know, I've sworn a few times and or I've been drinking alcohol when I'm making my videos. So I haven't been able to keep it as clean as I'd liked. But it's still, I believe, to be cleaner than my old one. But that's beside the point. My point being is, is I ramble. I'm different from most people, but not unique. Therefore, you know, this is a means of expressing myself. And it's worked well. You know, I've enjoyed it. I've, I've made contact with people on the internet. And I have some nice people who've tried to help me out. They've gifted me games to play. I've had someone try to give, set me up with new recording software, which I will do. I don't know why I keep putting it off. Uh, I think it's because... I'm just socially stupid. I don't know. Um, but I'd like to get it done. You know, it's been good. It's been fun and I wish to carry it on. But this whole fair use policy thing can affect me. I've had a few copyright claims made against my videos because sometimes there's music. It's usually music um, where there's some music in a video game that is copyright protected. It's actually someone's work that isn't just the video game soundtrack. It's actually a legitimate song. And I can't monetize the video because they've made a claim because a part of that song was used for so much time and the claim was made and that's it. They own all the money and everything. I've got about probably 20 videos at the moment that I've got copyright claims against them, but it's no big deal because I don't make much money off them anyway. And as far as I'm aware now, uh, at least for now anyway, people around the world can still see my video. It does say that if you're happy with the claim, you don't have to do anything. People can still access your video. It's not being blocked. So I just sort of go with it. I think, well, I can't be asked to argue it. A lot of the claimants I've seen have been made by legitimate companies as far as I'm aware. So I'm like, fair enough. I'm not going to argue it. I have used it. I haven't asked the permission. Fair enough. So yes, there is this fair use law in place that I could argue against. I don't know enough about it in the UK, but either way, for me personally, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not bothered, but I'm not going to make a big song and dance about it. But for Doug Walker and Nostalgia Critic and Althor Amiga Sin and many other content creators who do make a living from their channels using copyright material under the fair use policy uh it's a threat to them and if their child gets taken down or what have you then they've lost their way of living they have to go and get work or a different job they are in work anyway they're entertainers they're creators but they'd have to go and find work elsewhere they wouldn't be allowed to do what they do again at least not with on youtube it would be difficult um so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to comment on this where's the fair use thing that Nostalgia Critic brought up because even though I agree in principle that the fair use law is being stepped on by creators, uh, sorry, my mistake, being stepped on by copyright holders, sorry, not by creators, and creators feel they're being abused by it because the uh, Hollywood studios, video game industries or businesses, music record companies, etc. are not giving a darn about the fair use law. They just make the claims and that's it. You know, the fair use law means nothing to them. They will just do it. They don't care. Um, I can understand and sympathise that the fair use law does need to be not necessarily redefined, but it needs to be a certified. It needs to be clarified again that, hang on a minute, this is still a law. This is a legal obligation. If you are abusing this law and ignoring it when making claims or copyright uh, claims etc against other creators who have used your work under fair use that is legally they don't have to ask permission to use it then you're in trouble as a claimant you know if you're abusing the fair use law you're not listening to it you have not considered that in your claim and there's evidence to suggest that you haven't then you should be punished and penalized and the creators should be able to carry on doing what they're doing because they haven't done anything illegal um, I get that, and I think that does need to be refined. I think it needs to be emphasised, and I think it needs to be policed better. There needs to be another system in place where, right, we need to set something up so that uh, if there are claims and disputes that creators are being uh, abused by and therefore feel that they're in the right to do what they do, there should be a system in place that's quick, easy and cheap to get it sorted. Meanwhile, any money that's being made by the video 
in that time or not just video it could be a performance publicly or a song etc any money that's been made by it is put in a side account until this is resolved and then whoever's won the case be it the copyright holder or the, the creator they get to keep the money and carry on making money off their work that's fine um the only thing though that i do comment on is the fact that you know, I think that should be refined. I think YouTube should come up with a new system and really it shouldn't be computerized. It should not be algorithmic. Yes, algorithms are getting better and better in terms of intelligence, as in they're getting so complex and so uh, diverse and huge now that they can start doing basic things that human beings can do and therefore save a lot of human labor and effort. I get that. And therefore save money on labor heads. Um, but when it comes to this whole copyright thing and fair use thing and anything to do with a legal basis i.e with law algorithms and ai computers or i say ai programs or the equivalent of ai programs or complex algorithmic computers should not be used to sort this out because they just don't they're not subjective the law is subjective and whatever country you live in the law can be interpreted in many different ways depending on the law itself if the law is not specific enough of which thousands of bits of law and around the world are too vaguely written or too uh they're not specific enough with what they're trying to implement within the law itself like they have a general vague overtone about what's right and what's wrong and what's illegal and legal but if a very smart person who's an expert in law can interpret it in a different way because it's not specific enough in their interpretation and therefore their interpretation of the law is valid and they argue that successfully in a court of law they win you know um, so no law in the world is 100% specific and uh, sort of uh, non-negotiable. You know, any law can be argued and interpreted differently and taken to court and argued that, hang on, they haven't broken the law because, yes, the law says this, but not specifically to this case because blah, 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 blah. This person interprets it as blah. They've got every legal right to interpret it as blah because of X, Y, and Z. Therefore, they've done nothing wrong. Therefore, they're right. Therefore, the law needs to be changed, etc., etc. I get that. Um, that that cannot that that cannot be dealt with by an algorithmic computer. There has to be human minds behind it. Until AI programs or algorithmic programs can be subjective, is that possible? I don't know. To me, that would be like the next big step in AI if that hasn't already happened. So YouTube really needs to get rid of this algorithmic program or at least simplify it. So that some of the cases that or some of the claims made against content creators from copyright holders because of their use of material was used without their permission can be solved algorithmically, but not all of them. Some of them will have to go through the system and go, OK, this algorithmic program that YouTube's using or Google's using, it can't solve this problem because of these variables. So this must be a human matter. Thereby, there must be a team at YouTube or at Google or both that will have to solve claims. Now, I'm not saying there isn't one already, but from what content creators have said via their own videos and videos I've watched on YouTube recently and over the last year or so, this team that used to be at YouTube is either gone or is extremely small or just doesn't communicate very well. Not unless you badger them to death or make a big song and dance on their channel. So, yeah, there needs to be a bigger legal human team at YouTube. And yes, I know from Google and YouTube's perspective, that's going to be costly. It's going to be a, a right pain in the bum. And they're going to create friction between themselves and Hollywood and other movie producers and music producers and all that stuff. Yes, it's going to be an absolute nightmare to deal with. But that's what YouTube's all about, or at least that's originally what it's about. It's not about a platform where... It's just about uh, film companies, music companies, video game companies can just advertise their work. It's a homebrew video content channel. It's it's a network, sorry. It's originally built on the idea that anybody can make a video and stick it on YouTube for anybody to watch. It wasn't designed to be for, originally, the movie industry and the music industry and the video game industry or any part of the entertainment industry to use as another platform to get their work out. It's for the public. It's for anybody who's an indie creator or creator outside of those uh, Hollywood and what have you to make their own videos. But since it's been bought out by Google, then of course we've seen uh, music industries make their own music channels, artists make their own channels, 
the movie industry making their own channels for paid content and trailers might have you. they're starting to have a bigger play in youtube and a bigger say with what's going on and as a result that's where the system came to play they started to say no hang on we're going to pour money into youtube as a means of advertising our work to make more money for our work etc in other words it's another viewing platform outside of television and cinema and dvd and blu-ray and video and all that mcguffin and we're going to pay google some money to come up with a system where you know our work is prioritized over everybody else's so in other words if you're someone like me who's making a youtube channel and wants to try and make it big and you're someone on your own nowadays that's very hard to do on youtube because bigger youtubers or big uh, movie companies and music companies video companies get preference in their advertising space they pay them money to do that so google has a bit of a, a dilemma on their hands where you know they're making money off these movie and music companies to do what they do hence the system but these content creators who are also pretty big such as pewdiepie markiplier and what have you you know I, although having said that markiplier and pewdiepie haven't said anything about this where's the fair use i mean this has only just started so maybe they will say something maybe they won't maybe it doesn't bother them or concern them because they're big enough for google and youtube to make money from so they've got actually a certain level of protection on them anyway and not just those two those are the two biggest youtubers i watch there are loads of big youtube stars out there um who are probably protected to a certain point by youtube and google because they make money off them and therefore might have struck a deal with movie companies and music companies and what have you um smaller channels mind you get screwed and uh, even doug walker and nostalgia critic alpha amiga sin they're not big channels like they have a few hundred thousand subscribers behind them but they're not big enough to be protected so that's why they've made this where's the fair use video primarily because they their their way of living is under threat and uh, they want to be able to make content where they are not doing anything illegal and that they're not being harassed by companies every day and that they can carry on making a living from their work because that's what they want to do and that's fine you know i agree with that um but you've got to remember that doug walker of from Sin, and who else is going to be arguing this maybe pewdiepie markiplier i don't know they make money too and i personally believe that they wouldn't have done this where's the fair use policy thing if they didn't make a living out of their channel or their work on youtube if they didn't i doubt this would have happened but they do so that's why this is happening so i think to conclude this uh this rambling that i'm doing right now um when it comes to where's the fair use I believe personally that fair use is such a grey law, it's such a grey policy that you are still using, and I'm doing it too, remember, you're still using somebody else's material without their permission, unless you've asked for it and you've received it, fine. But if you're using their material without their permission for your own work, whatever work it happens to be, and you're making money from it, and they're not getting a cut for their work being in your video, then I believe they have the right to make a claim. Fair use policy or otherwise. Which is why I haven't disputed any claims on my videos. Because I am aware that with mine, Let's Playing, I'm using video game content that people have made to make my own stuff out of and if i make money from it great but that's what i'm doing i am using other people's work for my own benefit again primarily to express myself and have fun but i won't deny that i'm making money from it uh, but if you really want to know how much money i've made i've made a total of 37 dollars and 86 cents <laughs> that's it um which is still more than i thought i was ever going to make but half of that's gone to my partner so i've only probably made about 16 dollars in about a year and a half so yay but i did it for funsies i didn't do it to suddenly think yes i can make a living i did it because i just went oh well we'll see what happens you know either i can make a little bit of pocket money from it and that'd be great or i get into trouble and i get shut down and that's that you know i'm not fussed personally it's not i'm not big enough so i can't afford to not be fussed i've got another income i've got another uh, means of making a living um but for people who don't and they do use youtube as their own income then yeah you know 
they're under threat. But again, they're making money too. So if they weren't making money, I doubt this would have occurred and things would have carried on as they were. So I still believe that the content creators have the right to make a claim. And I don't think Doug Walker or Nostalgia Critic or Alpha Migra Sim was arguing against that. But they were arguing that they should consider fair use first before they make the claim, which I agree they should. So there needs to be some sort of policing going on where they can prove that they've used or considered fair use policy before the claim. They've got evidence to say, yep, we looked at the law, I looked at the video and I made these comparisons. And as far as I'm aware from the notes I've made or the research I did or however much time I spent on the matter, I am legally allowed to make a claim they're infringing on my work done it probably doesn't take them very long to make them to take that evidence into consideration or make that evidence to present whatever um i get that so that that does need a certifying and expressing um but the only other thing i can say is that it's so hard nowadays to actually make anything original to make anything that hasn't been inspired or uses somebody else's work to build on you know, because there's so many ideas out there that, you know, we've pretty much exhausted them all. There's still some unique ideas out there and there still will be some unique ideas in the years to come. But they're going to take longer to come about. So it's hard to make original, original content. Even music blatantly rips off other lyrics. Like the amount of times I hear modern day songs now from pop musicians especially, but probably from indie uh, singers and indie songwriters and, and, and you know all the other genres and stuff the amount of times I've heard the same lyrics the exact same lyrics in other songs over and over and over again that's blatant copyright infringement <laughs> but you could argue well yes but the lyric themselves is two vague words you know it, the, the statement is not unique to the person that statement can be said by anyone how can there be a copyright claim Blah, 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 blah. and that's it I mean recently with the Fine Brothers trying to copyright the word react so people can make react videos that ripped off or were similar in the format that the Fine Brothers did their own react videos to and they were going to come up with this react world program a bit like the Nintendo partnership program where you have to sign up with them and they supposedly give you tools to help you out but they take a cut from your work um, you know they tried to trademark the word react that that is ridiculous you know um although trademark and copyright are very different battlegrounds you know they're similar in what they are but they are different battlegrounds um and for example like i have a personal hatred against taylor swift um because i used to like her early work and i used to like her as a person i thought her early work was great but since she turned into a pop star and got famous and got under public scrutiny and i won't lie you know being under severe public scrutiny about her romantic life yeah that would drive you crazy as that person so i don't blame taylor swift for being angry about that but i don't like the fact she's turned into this very clever although she was clever to begin with she's turned to this very savvy businesswoman who's tried to copyright and i don't know if she has or not or at least trademark and i don't know if she was successful or not the words party like it's 19 party like it's 1989 and this sick beat she tried to copyright those statements or trademark those statements. Uh, and her reason for that was people were merchandising her lyrics unofficially without her permission. And therefore she wanted to stamp down on people using her lyrics or likeness on merchandise uh, without her permission. So in other words, any merchandise that is made that she's given permission to to be made from her work, it's legal. It's hers. It's official stuff. But you can't copyright words or lyrics. That's just silly you know that's going too far you know but anyway fair use policy on that yeah i think there's fair use that you can use existing sentences or lyrics in other songs and movies and stuff movies do it as well with scripts you know the amount of times you've heard the same line in movies over and over again there's got to be a certain amount of fair use involved with that you know i'm being nitpicky here but you see what i mean it's so the fair use thing is so gray and subjective i believe it'll always be so but if it is going to always be so, then the YouTube system needs to be subjective too. And yes, I know, again, it's going to be a ball ache for the people at YouTube and Google to implement and costly. But at the same time, it can generate money all around. Everybody wins. Everybody makes money. Everybody's happy. And overall, the net effect is that there is a positive gain. It just comes down to greed, really. And 
people's perspective of their work you know people's perspective of copyright if you've copyrighted your work and you don't want anybody else to use it you have the right to then tell people not to do it um but in the case of doug and alfred Amiga sin and others um they have also argued that it's also turning into an act of censorship if they make a video where they criticize a movie or a game or whatever because the game or movie itself is bad people shouldn't watch it or play it or if it's music should listen to it and that the points need to be made about why it's bad and how not to make this thing again how this shouldn't be popular people should not pay money to see it or play it or listen to it etc then if you've made a negative review or negative comment against a piece of work that somebody has copyrighted and holds then they can shut you down you know they can get rid of negative press they can get rid of that negative comment or negative review so that the only comments and reviews that are out there are positive or neutral at the very least um so so then their work is protected in that oh people don't finally realize early on that it's rubbish uh and then um uh you know that way that any income they could make from their work is damaged or is stopped or reduced because their work wasn't very good and people found out quickly so they didn't go and watch it or buy it or play it or listen to it etc that's not right you know if your work is rubbish people should have the right to say it's rubbish and then say why and then you as an artist or a creator should turn around and go fair enough i mean you know either i thought it was good um, and I'm sorry that you don't like it, but I'm still going to advertise it out there because I'm sure people out there will like it and I'm just being misunderstood. Or you should be honest and say, no, I did rush it. It was a cash grab. I'm sorry. Right. I'll do something a bit more original. But no one's going to be honest like that. It takes a lot of balls. It takes a lot of honesty. And also you've got to sacrifice some money and greed. So, yeah, um, it, it is a mess and a shambles. But both sides have got everything to lose. So I believe the ultimate solution here is to have a subjective system on YouTube where you can successfully argue your case if you believe a copyright holder is abusing the claim system against you. Or if you're a copyright holder, then you should be able to argue your case for claiming, etc. Whereby there's a neutral position, whereby any money that's been made is put to a side account. No one can claim that money until this is resolved and whoever wins gets the money, etc. And that the algorithmic system that YouTube uses should be reduced so that only some claims can be automatically sorted. Others must go to a legal team at YouTube or Google. Now, I know they could turn around and say, well, it's not our responsibility because at the end of the day, we don't upload the videos say youtube and google we don't own the copyrights uh to everybody's videos on youtube we're just a middle ground we're just a platform that people can upload content with and all that um that's it uh we've got nothing to do with it you know we shouldn't get involved in the legal affairs because it's not our business um, i get that but i'm afraid you're the middle guy and the middle guy has the hardest job in any form of of exchange or currency stuff you've got to sort it out if you want both sides to be happy you've got to sort this out i'm afraid you have to get involved and sort all this out i'm not saying that you have to pay for the legal costs for the creator to, to argue against the claimant and vice versa no you don't have to do that that's between them you are not responsible for legal costs but you are responsible for getting it sorted you are responsible for saying right we'll be the mediators right okay any money being made in this video goes to the side right let's hear your argument let's hear your argument and then if we believe we can solve it there and then we'll take a side and that's it if not then we're going to have to take this further into court but you guys are going to have to pay the cost because it's not our responsibility do you see what i mean um and i think that's fair i mean the only downside to that is, is that if you're a creator who doesn't have much money behind them then going to court is going to be costly and you know even if you win you're not going to make any money back you're still financially crippled so um there is a downside to that but i'm afraid that's a capitalistic issue that's beyond what youtube and google can do for you uh we'd have to take on capitalism <laughs> which i'm not going to do in this video because uh as much as i don't agree with some principles of capitalism i do agree with others so like any system it's got its faults but like any system it's got its benefits but it's also not going to be universally applicable to everyone i'm afraid some people are going to be excluded from it uh, and some people are going to benefit more than others through it. It's just the way the human world works. That's the way we roll. 
sounds lame, sounds rubbish, but that's because it is. We are human. We cannot all be satisfied. Some win, some lose. It sucks. If you want to do something about it, then you need to get up from your bum and go and do something about it. I mean, throwing money at a situation doesn't work, really. Unless you're lucky and you know that the thing you're throwing money at will actually do the work for you. Fair enough. But I personally believe that if you want to solve anything like this or otherwise, you need to get up from your bum and do it yourself. And that's a lot of hard work. And you may not win. That's life. Um, but anyway, I'm going to stop this rambling now. So um, thank you again for listening if you have done. What do you think about this? Where's the fair use thing that uh, Nostalgia Critic has set up and Alpha Amicus has expanded on at this point? Do you think that YouTube should redo their system? So this copyright system, this claim system should be destroyed or uh, re-engineered or whatever? Do you think that Dog Walker's got every right to do what he's doing in that he should be allowed to make money without any you know, permission seeking and what have you from the content holders and likewise do you think that these Hollywood movie producers and video game developers and what have you have the right to make these claims left, right and centre and not be penalised about it? Do you think that claimants who are successfully argued against should be penalised for making any other claims? Let us know in the comments section. But anyway, can I say thank you very much for listening if you have done. Um, please take it easy, have a good one and I hope to see you in another video.